Okay, so we are going to do slope today. All right, um, hopefully it's familiar to you. We'll see as we go along what you remember. So uh, the constant rate of change between points on the line is going to be the slope, okay? It's a ratio of the rise to the run. Do those words sound familiar? And in the, um, uh, in the equation of a line, it's um, the variable m is used. I like to think m is how it moves, okay? So slope is how we move from one point to the next. So there's different, there's four different types of slope, okay? If we are moving up, do we know what that's called? What kind of slope that's going to be? So the rise is going to be what direction? Positive. positive. There we go. Those words. Good. That'll be positive if we're moving up. Negative. Next one. Negative if it's falling down. Uh -huh. So those are usually the ones that are given to us, okay? Um, and the ones that we see the most often. The last two are special cases. They kind of go with our hoi books that we did last week. Do you remember that? Horizontal and vertical. Yes. Oh, I said that before. Yep. Oh, God, I didn't. So isn't this first one a horizontal line? Yes. Do you remember what, what, what the O stood for in the hoi box? Stop. Hey, I am talking. You are not. We talked about hoi box last week, okay? Because it helps me with our horizontal and our vertical lines. Do you remember what the O stood for in Hoy? I even said we don't need it last week, but you were going to need it today. It's something about the slope. I, I did this. I said equals slope. So what is that really? It's not an O. It's a. It's actually a number. It's zero. Okay. So when you have a horizontal line, your slope is going to be zero. Okay. I would. Yep, I would. So a horizontal line has a slope equal to zero, and it came from a y equals a number. So we used the h and the y last week to actually graph them. And when we saw, oh, y equals two, we knew that was a horizontal line cutting the y at two. Okay? And now today, that o is really the slope is zero. Okay? And then our other one that we had for vertical lines was the vux. So the, um, the v was for vertical. The X was because it was X equals a number, right? But what was the U? Do you remember? Something, un something, undefined. There you go. So this has an undefined slope. Okay. When we write, um, when we set up our slopes here in a minute, we're going to do rise over run. Okay. So the up, down, over the left, right. If it's straight up and down, there was never a left, right, correct? So you're going to have whatever number, any number at all, over zero, but can you ever divide by zero? No. So that's why this one becomes undefined, because there is no run, which means we're essentially dividing by zero, which isn't possible. Okay? <clears throat> so um, positive goes up, negative goes down. Well, uh, zero goes straight across. It's zero fun because you're not, it's really hard <laughs> to go flat. There's nothing helping you, right? <clears throat> and then undefined as when like you're falling off a cliff. <laughs> okay. Have y'all ever seen Slope Dude? Some people have seen Slope Dude. That's a video on YouTube that could help you. Like he goes, oh, yep, yeah. I'll fix it. Okay. So, we have finding slope from a graph um, where we have m equals rise over run. So, it's our vertical change over the horizontal change. And they've given us two points. Okay. So, look at our first one. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. So, I have a point down here. We're just going to call it point A. And I'm going to call this point, point B. So I want to know the vertical movement first and then the horizontal movement. So from A to B, did I go up or down? We went up. And I went up how many? Well, don't guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was a lucky guess. Yes, you went up seven. Okay, so I'm going to write it underneath. We went up seven, okay? And then how did I go across? 
one, two, three, four. So we went up a total of seven, and I went to the right four. Come on, Ben. Okay, we've talked about this. Is up and right, are either of those negative numbers, or are they both positive numbers? They're both positive numbers, okay? So we went up, mm, up seven over to the right four, so our slope is seven over four, like that. And they're both positive numbers. I can't reduce this fraction, we're done. Does anyone remember doing this? Yes, kind of, okay. All right, let's look at our line in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna call this guy point A. I'm going to call this guy over here point B. All right. From A to B, again, vertical movement. Bless you. Did we go up or down? down. We went down. I went down how many? Seven. We went down three. And then I went over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we went over nine total pieces. Are either one of those a negative movement? No. Which one? The three is negative because I went down. Remember, down and left are both negatives. Okay? So our slope this time, we went down three and right nine. So that's going to show as negative three over nine. Can I reduce that fraction? Yes. They're both divisible by 3. So if I divide them both by 3, this reduces to negative 1 third. Okay? Meaning I could also go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3. See that? Down 1, 1, 2, 3. So it just reduces our fraction. Question? Why can't you start from this so we read graphs like, like we read books. We always go from left to right. Yep. Because you think about the number line, that's how you would read the number line, left to right. So yeah, always read these left to right. What's that? If negative one third was one of the choices, that would be the one that you need to pick. And then like negative three ninths on like the state test or something, um, they've built it into where you would probably get partial credit for that, partial points, but not all the points. That makes sense. They've done better recently about getting partial points along the test. All right, let's go to three. Oh, oh wait, is it zero or is it undefined? Why? Because it's a horizontal line, right? There we go. That comes from hoy, which means our slope is going to be zero. So your m value would be zero. Okay, because we have a horizontal line for this one. Feeling okay about doing it from a graph? We're going to keep going. We have more. But do we get, like, what's happening? Okay. All right. How about number four? Good. Undefined. Why? It's a vertical. It's a vux. So we have an undefined slope for this one. Good, this is a vertical line. You okay? I'm going to try and do as much as I can. And if I can do it all, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> all right, number five. Right away looking at it, is it going to be a positive or negative number? Is this line going up or going down? If I'm going from A to B, hold on, if I move from A to B, if I move from A to B, we're going up, right? We read from left to right. Y'all stop, stop. You read from left to right. So go from going to A to B, you're going up. This is going to be a positive slope, okay? So I do go up. I go up how many? 
One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we're going up five. That's a terrible arrow. There we go. Up five. And to the right, three. So up five and over three gives me five thirds. This is my slope. I can't reduce five over three anymore. There's nothing else I can do with this problem. <clears throat> What's that? No. No, no, you keep it like this because it shows the movement of up, down, left, right. Yeah, so we don't rewrite it. <clears throat> All right, number six. Here we go. I have point A and we have point B. Is this going to be a positive or negative slope? From A to B, am I moving up? Yes, it'll be a positive number again. I went up how many? I went up two and I went over. Two. So positive 2 over positive 2 simplifies to 1. Good. So this slope would just be 1. So if your fraction can reduce to a whole number, you can do it like that and leave it alone. All right. Okay, so that's coming from graphs. Now we're going to do it um, using uh, actual points, okay? So on the graph, the points were shown to me, like where they were. On the back, they're going to give us coordinate points. So they're going to be what is X and what is Y without graphing the points themselves, okay? So what we do is our point A is going to give you X1, Y1, and our point B is going to give you x2, y2, okay? So when I only have the numbers, I want to know the difference. What was the difference between the heights? What was the difference between the, the links, okay? So the way we do it is we do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, okay? I'm sorry. Okay. If you're ever confused on which one is which, label them. Okay? Label your points. So number one, we have one, one, and four, three. The first point gives you X1, Y1. Does that make sense? X1, Y1. Your second point gives you X2, Y2. X2, Y2. Okay. So setting it up using our equation, what is Y2? Which one of these numbers? The 1, the 1, the 4, the 3. 3. Okay. Minus what is Y1? 1. One. All right, our denominator comes from x2 minus x1. What is x2? We labeled it with 4, okay, minus what is x1? 1. Now, friends, what's 3 minus 1? 2. 4 minus 1? 3. Can I reduce this fraction? No. So this is my slope. This is my slope. If I were to plot these points, I would see that, that uh, from A to B, I went up two and over three. Doesn't that make sense? My Y values went from one to three. Isn't that up two? My X's went from one to four. Isn't that to the right three? Okay, so make sure your math makes sense. So right is positive and left would have been a negative result. Um, yep. You can always do the L's. Your left hand makes an L. Your right hand does not. But if you were to draw an L. Okay. Can't help you with that. All right, here we go. Second one. I have negative two, four, and 10, negative two. 
Okay. I'm going to label neg this negative 2 is my first x. This 4 is my first y. Right? This 10 is my second x. This negative 2 is my second y. Okay. Now let's use our formula to set it up. Y2 minus Y1. What is Y2? Negative 2. All right. Minus, what is Y1? 4. Okay. Now X2 minus X1. What is X2? 10. Minus, what is X1? Oh. First time this is happening for us. We have a double negative. Do you remember what that does? It becomes a plus. If you have two minuses, they always come together to form a plus sign. Okay? Minus a negative always gives you a plus. So that becomes 10 plus 2. So now negative 2 minus 4, negative 6. If I take $2 away from you and then I take $4 away from you, I have taken 6 from you. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we have 10 plus 2, which is 12. Now I have negative 6 over 12. Always think, can I reduce this fraction? How does 6 over 12 simplify? So negative 1 over 2 is our slope for this. Okay. 6 over 12 is 1 half. The 6 was negative, so the negative is going to stay with it. What's up? Okay, here we go. What am I going to label... Negative 4. What is that? X1. It's x1. It's my first x. Good. What am I going to label 5? Y1. y1. It's my first y. What am I going to label negative 8? X2. X2. Negative 5. Y2. y2. There you go. Always do that first. It helps you stay organized. Okay? It'll help you stay organized. What's that? Um, yeah, I'll get some in. All right. So y2 minus y1, what is y2? Y2 is 5. Is negative 5. We always say minus. Now what is y1? 5. Okay. What is x2? What is x2? Negative 8. Good. There's always a minus right there. What is x1? See how there's a negative negative? Shh. See how that looks weird? Because we don't keep it like that. I got you. I got you. Okay. All right, here we go. What is now negative 5 minus 5? Okay, listen. When we have negatives or minuses, they're takeaways. I take away five, I take away five. I have taken $10 from you, all right? <laughs> now, negative eight plus four. I took $8 away. I gave you $4 back. I still owe you $4, right? Does that make sense? Does that help with the positive negative stuff? Okay. All right, there's, um, there's two ways I can simplify this problem, Tram. You see how I have those two negatives? You see it? What does the two negatives make me do? So instead of adding, technically, this whole thing becomes a positive. This is now a positive fraction. Negative divided by negative is a positive. And then what's 10 over 4? It becomes 5 over 2, right? They can both be divided. They can both be divided by 2. Okay, so it becomes positive 5 over positive 2, like this. 
Okay. If I if I asked you what's negative eight divided by negative two, what would you tell me? Positive four, right? So that's where the negatives happen. Is that is that what's confusing? The negative over negative. Okay. Let me ask you this: When you multiply two negatives, what is always the result? A positive number. Same thing with dividing. If you divide two negatives, you'll always have a positive result. So it's the same thing. It's just opposite. Okay. All right. I'm moving on. Moving on. More practice is going to be the best thing for us. Here we go. Number four. We have ten zero, and I have negative two four. So I'm going to label this as my first x, my first y. Then we have our second x and our second y. All right? y2 minus y1. Some people earlier, they always like started off like this. To help you remember, it's always minus. If you want to do it that way, go for it. That'll always be the setup. Okay? Now you just got to put the numbers where they belong. y2 is 4. y1 is 0. Right? x2 is negative 2. x1 is 10. There you go. My denominator is negative 12. What's my numerator? Four. 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 Okay. It's okay. It happens. Calm down. Um, is this the answer? Am I done? Oh, I can do more than two, though. Four. I can divide them both by four. One over negative three. Like that. Okay. What we got? Four more? Oh, no. Oh, there's 12 back here. All right, let's keep going, guys. Let's keep going. Here we go. I divided them both by four. Four divided by four is one. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Number 5. I have the point 5, 9 and 3, 9. So this is my first x. This is my first y. This is my second x. This is my second y. I'm going to do something minus something over something minus something, right? So what is y2? What is y1? Mm -hmm. What is x2? What is x1? Mm -hmm. All right. What's our numerator? Oh, friends, numerator. Zero. What's my denominator? There you go. So, what does this simplify? No. I mean, kind of. No, no. That's not, but that's not what's happening. Oh, okay. Hey, guys, listen. Fractions are parts over holes, right? Yes? That means that there is no part of this hole. It is not there. There is nothing. Okay? Hey, what kind of lines have a slope of zero? Uh, vertical. Horizontal. Horizontal, right? Y'all, I am trying to help you. Thank you. All right. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero, right? And their y equals a number. Look at the y's that we just got. Did you pay attention? They were the same. So did your y change? No, it went straight across the nines. So that shows it was a horizontal. Huh? We will, yes. Yeah, next week. Okay. All right, number six. All right. You ready? Here we go. This is my first x. This is my first y. 
This is my second X. This is my second Y. Set it up. What goes on the in the numerator? The top. There you go. Five minus eight. Stay with me. And then my denominator is negative seven minus negative seven. Good. Which turns into a plus. So negative three over zero. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. Again, they're parts over wholes, right? That's what fractions are. If my whole is nothing, if, if I don't have a pizza, I can't have three pieces of pizza, right? No, if it does not, if it does not exist, you cannot have it. Okay, that's how this is undefined. What kind of lines have undefined slopes? Vertical. Verticals. Vertical. Remember our VUX? Oh, okay, remember it was vertical lines are undefined and their X equals a number? Did you notice that our X's did not change? The X didn't change, so there was, there was no run. There was only rise. So this was falling off the cliff. Oh. Okay. Okay. So those are your two special cases. All right. Number seven. This is my first X. This is my first Y. This is my second X. This is my second Y. So when we set it up, what's the, what's, remember it's Y2 minus Y1. Three minus nine. And then what's my denominator? Good. Two minus negative one. See the two negatives? Okay. It's always a minus. It's always a minus. So when I put another negative next to the minus, that's going to make it into a plus. If that doesn't happen, it'll always stay minus. Okay. It's not a two over three. What is six minus nine? I mean, what is, dang it, what's 3 minus 9? I gave it away. Yes, and then 2 plus 1 is 3. So now what's negative 6 divided by 3? Negative 6 divided by 3. Negative 2. A, A, we were doing so good. Stay with me. Stay with me. I think we need to do a couple more. Ah, hold on. Okay. Here we go. X1, Y1. X2, Y2. Before you put any numbers down, do minus over minus, because you know it has to be a minus. All right, what is my numerator going to be? Tyson, what is my numerator going to be, friends? Uh huh. Yes. Denominator. Uh huh. So, what happens? Minus negative makes it into a plus sign down there. I took two dollars. I took thirteen dollars. Hold on, hold on. Um, other way. You just find backwards. Negative fifteen over ten. Okay. Does this reduce? Can I divide both of those by the same number? Yeah. Like a, like a five? Yes. So if I divide them both by five, what's negative 15 divided by five? Negative three. What's 10 divided by five? Two. So there's our slope for this one. 
All right. Can you do four of them? I'll come stamp you. All right. Hey, lovelies, you have 10 minutes to do four problems and get a stamp. Okay? You can do it.